In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to work with multimedia in Articulate Presenter 360. Now, in the previous tutorials, we looked at how to work with QuizMaker and Engage Interactions. We also looked at the Articulate 360 characters and how to work with those. And now, what we're going to do is look at video, flash, and web objects. So, let's look at video first. So, go to the Articulate tab, click on Video. Now, one of the things you'll notice is you have four ways you can work with video. The first is that you can add a slide video from File, so that'll add a video onto the slide. You can add a slide video from a website, so if you have a website URL or website embed code, you can insert the video that way. You'll need to remember that the user needs to have internet access to see those videos then. And then you can also insert a sidebar video. So with Articulate Presenter 360, you'll have your player and there's a sidebar on the player and you can insert a video in there. And we'll look at how that works as well. And then the last option is to record a webcam. Once you record your webcam video, you'll have the choice. Do you want to insert it into the slide or do you want to insert it into the sidebar? So what we'll look at in this tutorial is how to insert the video into the slide and then how to insert the video into the sidebar. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a blank slide here. and We'll just insert a video. So uh, just go to Video, Slide Video from File. And then you've got your practice files. You can use your own video. Or you can use these practice files. And we're just going to use the Woman Coffee. That's going to open up this Properties window. So I can play the video. And this way I can make sure it's the video I want. If not, just click on this link and select a different video. And then you have some properties here. So you can show the video in Slide or you can have it open in a new browser. A lot of people do that if the video is really large or they're doing a full screen video capture or something like that and it doesn't fit well in the player. Right, how do you want the video to play? Do you want it to play automatically or do you want the user to click on it? And then you can also add some video controls. And then you have some timing options. We're just going to keep the default and just hit OK. Now you can see the video is loaded on the slide. And this might work fine for your course. Or you can click the video and scale it, move it around. Uh, it's just going to be like any other object that you have on the slide. Let's go ahead and preview this and see what we get. All right, so here's our preview. And you can see the video is playing the way I want it to and it's scaled. Now one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're working with video is how does it work on a mobile device. It's because while you preview this on the mobile device, it's going to preview this way on your desktop. When you're actually previewing it on a mobile device, it's going to be a little bit different. For example, if I were to watch this slide on my iPhone, what would happen is the video would open up outside of the course. So I'd watch the video and I'd close it and I'd be back on the slide. So that's the way the iPhone is handling that media. So if you're using video and you know you're going to publish for mobile devices, what you want to do is make sure that you're testing a published course on those mobile devices to make sure that you're getting the user experience that you want. Now when you're in desktop mode, You'll notice that you have this sidebar menu. And this is only the case in desktop mode. If you're on the mobile devices, you can see that the mobile devices have their own responsive mobile player and they don't have a sidebar. In that case, the sidebar options are going to be different on mobile devices. So if we click on our desktop view though, we have a sidebar menu and I can add a video in the sidebar. So we're going to do that next. So let's go to another blank slide. And I have a sidebar practice video so we can use that. So go up to Video, Add Sidebar Video. And you're back in your Practice folder and there's this Talking Head demo. Go ahead and click that. As you can see, I've got some property options here. I'm going to hit OK. And then you can see that the video is loaded here. Now this is a little thumbnail indicator. Let me know that the video is here as a sidebar video. If I preview this, So you can see that the sidebar video plays really well. So it's a great way to add talking head video or introduce your course or however you want to do that. So you have the option of inserting a video on a slide or you can insert the video in a sidebar. And again, if you're using webcams, you just record your webcam video and at that point you have the same options. Do you want it on the slide or do you want it on the sidebar? Now let's go ahead and look at inserting Flash. And that's pretty straightforward. So you insert Flash, you just go to Flash, and you find your Flash file. We have a practice one in the course, so you can go ahead and use that. 
Then you have a similar dialog box. We'll hit OK. And now you have your Flash video and you can move it around. Now uh, a lot of people are not using Flash anymore, which is good. If you're still using Flash, you want to consider how you're publishing your course. So let's go to the Publish Options. You'll notice when you publish, the default is going to be HTML5 with Flash fallback. What that means is that by default, the course is going to play in HTML5. If the browser is older and doesn't support HTML5, then it's going to use the Flash version of the course. Now this is something to keep in mind because if you have Flash content and you're publishing for HTML5, the Flash is not going to play in the HTML5 version of the course. It's also not going to play in your mobile devices. So if you are using Flash content, you can change your format. So you may start with Flash as a default right here, or you can just choose Flash only. But if you're choosing HTML5 as a, as a starting or default playback, your Flash content won't play. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, now let's look at web objects. Web objects are pretty cool because when you insert a web object, essentially you can take some of these cool website apps. Uh, they're all on the internet. And you can integrate those into your e-learning courses. And it's, and it's really super simple. So all you have to do is insert a web object. So we're going to do, I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first is we just come up to insert web object. We add a web object. And you can just add a URL. I'm going to add my website. So I've got the blog address here. And we'll just have it display in the slide. I hit OK. Now when I add a web object, I get this placeholder box. And this box is where the web object's going to appear. So in this case, I'm going to scale this box and we'll put the web object in here. And so what's going to happen is when I publish this course, this slide is going to have all the slide content. And wherever this box is, that's going to be the web object that I'm pulling in. Now in this case, it's probably not going to look right because I'll have some scroll bars. But you know, some of those apps and things that you can use will look really good in here. I'm going to do this one more time. So I'm going to, I have another blank slide. So I'm going to insert a web object. And I'll insert the blog again. And this time we're just going to have it fill the entire screen. So you can see what it looks like. And the other way you can insert a web object is you can create a web page and save it to a local drive. And then you can insert that web page. And so it'll insert the whole web structure there, all the folders and everything as well. So the, the advantage there is you can create some custom web pages or web objects and just have them on your local drive and make them part of your course. And you're not dependent on being online or on the internet uh, to pull in the web objects. The blog address here requires that the user is, has internet access. The local device doesn't matter because it's going to be whatever you built locally. So I'll show you how that works. So let's create another blank slide here. And if you look inside your practice folder, you'll notice that we have a web object folder. And inside of there, we've got a whole web page structure. And so there's an index.html. When I click on that, it opens up a web page. And this is what it would look like. So this is the web page that we built. So you can see I've got some content. I've got this kind of this look uh, for that web page. And that's all inside these folders. So you can see there's my logos. Um, there's different resources and whatever, right? Everything that's part of that web page you can see is um, in these folders. And so what I want to do is make sure that there's an index.html. When I insert the web object, I come to this folder, it's going to recognize there's an index.html. And it's going to pull in all of this and make it part of my published output. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to insert a web object. Now we're going to go to the folder and look for the local version of that web object. And we have that in here in our practice file. So we go to web object. And then we can see here are our folders and there's that index.html. Now we can't see it, but we know that's in the folder. So let's go ahead and select that folder. And you can see I can test the link if I want to. I'm going to have it in the slide. I hit OK. And again, I can move this around. I'm just going to fill up the entire slide. And then I would hit Publish or Preview. Now if you hit Preview, you're just going to get a placeholder because it needs to be published so that you can see it. So I have a published version of that. So here's that web object that we inserted locally. But let's go ahead and see the published version. 
So here's the web object that we scaled, and this is the website. You can see because the web page is bigger than that box, you can see how that works. Here's the web object that we inserted the entire slide, right? So I can see that the web object is in here, so I can leverage this web page. And then here's the local version of it, and you can see that I can uh, see the local version of that. So this is again part of my published folder. These two web objects here that pull in the blog, I need to be connected to the internet to even have something show up in this slide. This, because it was published locally, is part of my published folder, so this web object is going to be inside the published folder. So a lot of neat things you can do with web objects, um, but essentially you just insert them on the slide. You can make them full screen or you can make them just part of the screen and leverage some of the uh, slide space that you have. And that's basically it when you're working with your media content. So you can insert video. So you got a few ways to do that. You can insert Flash objects. Make sure that you're paying attention to your publish options if you're using Flash. And then you can leverage web sites and different web technologies and insert those using the web object feature. So that's just a matter of going out and practicing it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump in the community and ask. We're always there to help you out. And then watch the other tutorials to learn more about Articulate Presenter 360.